on these type of lakes early in the year, I mean, this is, this is early March, typically you've got a chance at like two or three different patterns. Um, it really all depends on what the weather's been doing. The last few days weather, really the last, you know, even up to a month or so, if, if it's been a warm, stable kind of trend, you know, those fish will really push shallow and they'll push back into places. Even something like a run-in like this, where you, if you've had a warm rain, those fish are likely to be just as far back into that as what you can get. You know, another deal we deal with is the water fluctuation. Sometimes our water is low and stable. Sometimes it jumps up real quick. But some of the patterns you'll, you'll run into sometimes will be those run-ins or other times it may be a secondary point. Maybe it's a main lake bluff deal that's going on. And a lot of times there'll be a mul you know, multiple type patterns going on. You may be able to catch a few fish on secondary points, but your really big ones are actually still coming out on the main lake. So, but with the, with the flat sided bait, you're able to cover that water pretty quickly, move through those areas and determine, are they in the backs of these run-ins? Are they out here on a little secondary point? Or do I need to be out on the main channel you know, cranking a steeper bank or something. This one on the green gizzard. Even in some fairly dirty water. On the gizzard grizzard. Come here, you chunky little fella. That's pretty good. You can tell he wanted to eat it. I mean, he got it crossways, right across his face. Flat sided crankbaits are something that I love to fish. I mean, man, they are some of the most effective baits when a lot of other stuff just isn't working. You know, they're able to pick up fish under those tough conditions, days when you have, you know, bright sunny skies and not much wind. That can be a great day when you can catch fish still on a flat sided crankbait that you're not able to on those days, you know, with a round bodied bait, something that's much more aggressive. The obvious flat sided bait time of year to fish is cooler water. You're talking water anywhere from that 50 to 60, 65 degree range. Everybody knows to throw a flat sided slim. bait then. It just works extremely well in those cooler water temperatures. It's a really natural action type bait. And those fish, man, they just eat them that time of the year. That tighter wobble doesn't put off a lot of vibration. It's really natural subdued kind of action in those cooler water temperatures. But the big thing to me is actually how you fish the bait. You look at this bank here. So look at the slope. This is an easy place to be able to pick it out, okay? Now it does change a little bit because we're near the back of a pocket. But if you look at this shoreline, what you've got above the water, if you imagine that extending out below the water, that same taper as it comes down at a nice even angle. This bait that I'm throwing right now runs about six feet deep on a long cast, okay? I'm gonna set my boat out in seven to eight feet of water, a little bit deeper than what that bait will run because I wanna make bottom contact almost all the way to the boat. Just before I reach the boat, I want it to quit hitting the bottom and that way it'll turn and actually come up. That's a big triggering thing if bass are following your bait. When it comes off the bottom, actually turns to come up at the boat, a lot of times when that, that's when that fish is gonna strike. But again, looking at that shoreline, that bait running six feet deep, I'm gonna to wanna to throw it up there into that two to three foot depth mark and then fish it out across that. So I'm gonna make kind of a 45 degree angled cast not right up to the dirt, not right up to the shoreline, unless I find out the fish are there. If they are, then I'm gonna start fishing it. But most times with the six foot bait, I wanna throw it into two feet of water, sit in seven or eight, and fish it kind of at a semi-parallel angle going down the bank. It's not as sharp as a 45 degree. Semi-parallel is how I would describe the angle that I'm fishing that bait. Reel speed, how fast do you reel the bait in? That's another big, big component with it. The colder the water that I'm fishing, the slower I'm gonna reel it. I like to use a six, eight to one gear ratio reel, 12 to 14 pound line, depending just exactly on the bait that I'm using, if I'm trying to achieve the very max depth that I can get out of that bait. But that six, eight to one, I'm able to have a lot of control with it. I can fish it as slow as I need to in water that's 50, 52 degrees. I can also fish it very quickly if I need to when that water's up 58, 60, maybe even 65 degrees. But making bottom contact, the majority of the retrieve is essential with a flat sided crankbait. With this bait having a circuit board round lip, that's what a lot of flat sided baits have in those. You know, they, some of them have square bills, but most of the ones I like to fish on a flat sided bait have a round lip. That just helps with that tighter, kind of moderate action, not a real hard vibration that you're gonna get with a square wheel a lot of times. It does 
not deflect as well. I mean, that's just part of it. You know, a big wide square lip is gonna come through cover a little bit better. Can I fish this bait in brush? Absolutely, but what I have to do is I have to really work that bait with the rod. If I can feel my line coming up to a piece of cover, you know, the bait's gonna run under it. Raising your rod tip during the retrieve is gonna help you come through that stuff so much more. If you just keep your rod tip down and try to just grind that bait through it, chances are you're probably gonna get hung. But even with that round build bait, if as long as I really feel it coming and I work it with the rod tip, holding that rod tip up, stop reeling, just kind of pull that bait through it, I'm able to fish it through very, very thick cover that way. I just have to be paying attention to what that feel is, what's going on underneath the water, and just really be in tune with my bait during that retrieve. Balsa wood being so buoyant, if you've got a bait that's not weighted really heavy, that bait you can stop and it's gonna back up a lot. Honestly though, the flat sided baits I fish, I wanna have as much weight in them as I can and that bait just barely, barely rise or even suspend because I am fishing these in cold water. When that water's at its coldest and I'm retrieving that bait, I'm gonna pause it a lot. I'm gonna reel that bait down to the bottom, bump it off of a piece of cover, stop, pause, because I want the bait to hang there. It's not so much about having it be able to back out of a stump. If I'm fishing in that heavy cover, I'm gonna fish a different bait. But for me, for these flat sided baits, you know, a lot of times cool weather, the wind blows just like it is right now. You need a bait that you're able to cast, that you're able to get out there a good long distance. If that keeps the bait from floating really, really high, I'm okay with that because I'm gonna gain more by being able to cast that bait a long way, cover water with it, and get it where I know those fish are. For me with crankbait fishing, having the perfect setup is nearly everything. It doesn't matter how many bites you get, if you don't have the right rod, reel, and line set up, you know, to get those fish in the boat. For me, a more parabolic rod. There's nothing I like better than that Bass Pro cranking stick. It's a seven foot, they call it a medium heavy action, but it is a pretty soft rod to be a medium heavy. And it's a blend, it's not a full graphite, it's not a full glass, it's actually a blend rod. Six, eight to one gear ratio, and I always throw my crankbaits on fluorocarbon. It doesn't matter what crankbait it is, from the very shallowest DT to a DT20, or something like this slim, I always throw those baits on straight fluorocarbon line. I'll, I'll fish this bait on 12 if I'm really trying to get it in as deep a depth as I possibly can, you know, and if I'm not around a lot of cover. If I'm trying to get that bait to run six, possibly even seven feet, I'm gonna throw it on 12 pound line. If I'm not quite so worried about depth, the fish are a little bit shallower, and I'm fishing around heavier cover, I'm gonna step up to 14. I don't mind to go up to that heavier line, because I've got a really big set of hooks on this thing. It's a really awesome thing that we were able to do is to put premium trebles, the VMC hybrid short shank number three treble hooks on this bait straight out of the pack. What does that mean for you as an angler buying this? You can tie that thing on, pull it straight out of the pack, you're good to go. There's nothing else I'm gonna do to this bait before I start fishing with it. I'm gonna open the pack and I'm gonna tie it on. So that is a really, really great plus. But with those big treble hooks, don't be afraid to use a little bit heavier line. If I'm really fishing this thing super shallow and heavy cover, I'll go up to 17 with it. It's not gonna affect the action. The bait is heavy enough to cast really well, even with heavier fluorocarbon if you're fishing it that shallow. Doesn't feel real big, but it is a bass, bass fish, small bass fish on slim, right out here on this little secondary like point. It's actually two casts in a row, I've just had one. Not too bad. Maybe this will be a place that's kinda, kinda loaded up with. Boy, that fish is cold. I mean, just cold to the touch. Those pre-spawn bass, when they pull up, a lot of times, man, you can, you can hit a little place where you can catch a bunch of them in a row. I've done it, done it a lot of times where, man, just find them wadded up really good. Sometimes it'll be on something obvious, sometimes it'll be on something really you know, obscure, but it's a great time. People don't realize just how, just how grouped up those fish will get at times, but they definitely can in that pre-spawn. Looking at a shoreline like this, you'd say, man, it, it all kind of looks the same. And honestly, it does under the water. I mean, I can, I can see that. And I can't tell you that I'm gonna catch one right here or that it's gonna be up there or wherever it may be along this bank. The nice thing with fishing a flat sided crankbait is I'm able to cover all of this pretty quickly and I feel like very efficiently. If there's a fish there that's fairly active, I'm gonna find out about it. I'm gonna know about it. 
And two, I may find something so very subtle with my bait that I can't see with my electronics that there could be multiple fish using. So that's a great thing with the flat sided crankbait. It's, I'm not burning the bait, it's just a slow steady retrieve, some occasional pauses, but I'm able to crank through these places that are kind of nothing looking areas and run across those small groups of fish or just an individual fish that can go a long way throughout the day. Something that happens a lot in the south and really probably any parts of the country, but you know, we'll get a warm rain this time of the year where the air temp will be 55, maybe 60 degrees, and then it'll rain an inch, two inches. And what happens, you get a lot of dirty runoff, but that dirty runoff will be really, really warm. The main body of the lake may be 45, 48 degrees. You pull back into a little place like this, I'm reading 57. That's an extreme difference, and those bass know it. I mean, as soon as it starts raining, I feel like they feel that first drop of warm water hit. They know the places that have a big inflow, and they'll move into those. The bait pulls into them, the bass pull right in there to feed on them. It's just a great time for those bass to be able to ambush that bait fish really easily, pin them up in that really shallow water, and take advantage of those warm days, those warm conditions that you've got. 